One thing that large language models are very good at is in context learning. You give a few input and output example to a model and afterward you ask it to complete a task. Surprisingly, even by not being specifically trained for it, the model is able to intelligently complete it. How are these models able to do that and what is exactly in context learning? In today's video, we will explore the recent theory about how this behavior is possible and how the research community currently thinks in context learning works. We'll first go through some definition to set up the table, then we'll highlight why from a machine learning standpoint in-context learning is a surprising behavior of LLMs. We'll then explore the first hypothesis of how in-context learning works, which takes the form of a Bayesian framework. Finally, we'll explore a second connected hypothesis which hints towards large language model training in some ways algorithm implicitly during in-context learning tasks. Disclaimer, this area of research is still in heavy development. If you are listening to this in the future, do put this into context. So let's start by some quick definitions. A prompt that leverage in-context learning will have the following four elements, an input distribution, a distribution of output, both of which are mapped together in an input-output mapping, and finally, a format in which the in-context learning prompt is presented. Each of these elements play a role in the in-context learning performance of a model. The term in-context learning was coined in the paper Language Model Are Few Shot Learners. This paper was the one that introduced GPT-3 in 2020. In the paper, the others from OpenAI realized that in various tasks, the large language model seemed able to understand what to accomplish with enough example and with no change in weight. As you can see, when the 175 billion parameter large language model is given one example in context, its performance on unseen tasks increased dramatically, even more so when the prompt is given with natural language. As the number of examples in context increase for all of the model, the performance increased in a linear way. This difference in performance is especially present in larger models. The in-context learning task can be varied and can range from learning to do addition, to learning how to unscramble words, to translating from English to French in the proper format. Now, why is it so surprising that given a bunch of examples, the models can learn to do a task right? GPT-3 isn't the first model that is able to do few-shot learning, as other meta-learning paradigm were developed years before. Like in this paper, which used a LSCM as a basis model for meta learning in 2017. In this setup, there were two models a meta learner that is training another learner on a very few examples to complete a task. What is surprising in the context of large language models is that they are not explicitly conditioned for this meta learning. Broadly speaking, GPT 3, where in context learning was first witnessed, is trained mostly in an unsupervised fashion to predict next token. Nothing about this setup condition explicitly for learning with few shot example. By the way, this slide was stolen from Misha Laskin on Twitter. It's a great account to follow for deep learning content. So going from next token prediction to solving complex problem in a structured way with little example is a very big leap forward in terms of ability. So how does in context learning work then if it wasn't explicitly trained for? The first hypothesis that start to explain this phenomenon is a Bayesian framework built out in 2022. The framework is mainly built up from these two papers from Xi at Sanford and Min from University of Washington. The core idea is that when given a prompt, the language model will infer the latent concepts from the prompt and retrieve the same concept in its pre-training distribution. In the example to the left, the main latent concepts are finance, news, and sentimentalizes, while on the right, the main concepts are news topic for classification. In simple terms, the framework for in-context learning defines a kind of probabilistic retrieval process that is guided by the prompt concept distribution. As the example are given as input to a trained language model, it will search the concept learned within its weight. Then it will retrieve the most likely concept and output a likely answer to the prompt. The knowledge of all these latent concepts come from the pre-training data concept distribution where the model learned and stored them somewhat in its weight. Now that pre-training concept distribution is built up of many, many documents, billion in the case of GPT-3. These documents could be seen as being generated from latent core concept to go from the pure latent concept to the pre-training document a sampling procedure has taken place from a human at some point in time. The sampled concept were then used to generate a document and crystallize one or many concepts into the pre-training data for the LLM. Similar flow can be sketched out for the prompt, where the prompt is built out by first sampling from latent concept then each of the example and the problem are generated in an independent and identically distributed manner by human and crystallized into the input for the LLM. If you look at an example, we have the following from Xi paper. The prompt is, Albert Einstein was German, Mahatma Gandhi was Indian, Marie Curie was, and the output is Polish. 
Now, the general concept we're talking about from the prompt is sharpened the more example we give. The concept seems to be related to wiki information, biographical information, and nationality. Once this concept is properly teased out by the model, it can then infer the most likely output given the concept and the prompt. There is an interesting phenomenon of sharpening the concept signals here. In this particular framework, you can separate the information within the prompt into two things. Signal, which are the information-rich portion of the prompt, and noise, which are the region in the prompt that could potentially add confusion to the understanding of the in-context learning task. As you can see in this example, the transition within training sample has a lot of signals, while transition between example add in noise. The results obtained by Min were pretty well aligned within this framework. One of the most interesting results is this graph, which compared three models together in virus ICL, so in context learning task. In the first type of ICL task, when we do not give a prompt example for a given task, the model has some baseline level of accuracy. We can see that the larger model, like GPT-3, seems to be doing generally better than the others. Now, when we give prompt example with the right labels, we increase the accuracy by a large amount. Again, the performance here is dominated by the largest model. However, randomizing the output label in the example barely change anything compared to having the right label. The models are still better than without example. The other investigated further by manipulating each of these four aspects of a prompt we saw earlier. Remember, we don't only have the input and output distribution, we also have the format and the input-output mapping. What they saw was the following. Having perfect in-context example is usually the best as expected. Removing the right input-output mapping aka scrambling, while keeping the right output space is not changing anything much. Yet the in-context learning deteriorates way more when you remove the input space information. For instance, when you sample random words from a document to replace the actual proper in-context input. To summarize these early findings, the input distribution signal is really key. The output space and format signal are also important, but surprisingly, the input-output mapping signal is not that important, which means you don't need to have the right output for each example for the model to understand the in-context learning tax. This is a pretty big deal. These results were concurrent by other exploration of in-context learning by Anthropic, namely, which discovered what is called induction heads in the transformer architecture. The induction heads are defined as follows. Induction heads are named by analogy to inductive reasoning. In inductive reasoning, we might infer that if A is followed by B earlier in the context, a is more likely to be followed by B again later in the same context. Notice that induction heads are implementing a simple algorithm and are not memorizing a fixed table of n gram statistic. The rule A, B, dot, 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 A, then B applies regardless of what A's and B are. The important part is that after studying this induction head, the author realized that the model was implicitly implementing some type of algorithm or at least using them which is uh, intimately connected to the second hypothesis. The hypothesis is that the large language model are in fact implementing learning algorithm implicitly to do in-context learning and that actual learning is happening. The notion of transformer being able to implement some form of learning algorithm internally is a recent and intense area of research. It seems like in theory, the transformer architecture can do in-context learning through something closely resemble gradient descent or other learning algorithm. Let's see a very concrete example from Google research that ties in with the result we just found out about the input-output mapping, not mattering for the in-context learning. The model in question were the whole family of GPT-3, StruckGPT, Codex, Palm, Flampalm, from small to large. There were various tasks that were studied with three main ICL techniques. Regular ICL, which involved giving example with the proper four parameter of an ICL prompt. Flip label ICL, where the example of the opposite meaning they should have. And finally, semantically unrelated target, which means that the elements have no connection between the input and the output. For instance, in a sentiment analysis task, positive might be replaced by apple, and negative might be replaced by oranges. So we change the output distribution here. In the first result we'll explore, the other use the flip label ICL flavor. What they saw is the following figure. On the y-axis, we have the accuracy on a given task. On the x-axis, we have the percentage of flip label in an in-context learning prompt. This is per family of models and per model size. As you can see, with the right labels given in prompt, most models are running better than chance, except some variation of GPT-3. However, as the number of flip label reach 100%, the largest models are making guesses that are worse than chance. 
As we've seen previously, this result is a bit weird because it contradicts what we've learned in the Bayesian framework where the input-output mapping wasn't that important. It seems like their largest model are learning to stop following what their pre-training data distribution is telling them about that latent concept, and instead they are listening to the input-output mapping signal now. In this instance, the larger model are more correct than the smaller one due by the nature of the flip label. The second hint that some sort of on-the-fly learning is occurring comes with the semantically unrelated target ICL experiment. And that's it up, we have the various model and their variant doing a task, either prompt with regular ICL or the semantically unrelated ICL. What we see is that the biggest model, except GPT-3, are almost as good in the two scenarios, effectively learning something that wasn't in their training distribution, now being able to use that during testing. Yet, the smaller model have a harder time, being very close to random with the semantically unrelated target. The other concluded with the following. These results underscore how the in-context learning behavior or language model can change depending on the scale of the language model and that larger language model have an emergent ability to map input to many type of label, a form of true symbolic reasoning in which input label mapping can be learned for arbitrary symbols. So as a model scale, they gain emerging ability to create or use functions to map input to output like we've seen with the induction heads and transformers. There's a mounting amount of research in that line of thought that the larger language model might be doing something close to learning on the fly Although it's still an area of intense research, this seems to be something that is not only theoretically feasible, but also something the larger models are actively doing during testing. If you want to learn more about in-context learning, I will recommend this daughter blog by the Stanford AI Lab, which do a good job about summarizing the subject, as well as this The Gradient article, which include the perspective of the learning on the fly. Both will be in the description along with the dozens of paper presented. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like if it was the case and leave a comment if you have any questions. I'm here to help. Have a great week, everyone, and see you in the next video.